we have yet another gay republic. Of course! These stories, you know, they used to give me joy uh, because we exposed their hypocrisy, etc. Now it's uh, a little revolting. You know, it's, we've seen it a million times. There's a guy by the name of uh, Philip Hinkle. He is a representative, uh, and he has decided uh, from Indian Indianapolis, and he has decided that he was going to go ahead and uh, answer a, a call on Craigslist for uh, M for M, meaning men for men, uh, and try to get a 20-year-old, who, by the way, turned out in reality to be 18 years old, to come sleep with him in a hotel room. He offered him 80 bucks uh, and said, if you know, but if he was really good, uh, that he could give an additional 50 to 60 dollars. Wow, that is quite enticing. Uh, finally, they do go into the hotel room. Like an 18-year-old does show up, uh, and of course, the 18-year-old is a is a gentleman. And you're going to be surprised to find out Hinkle's uh, anti-gay record later in this uh, story. And Hinkle is in a towel. Later, uh, he tells the kid that he's a state official. And when he does, the kid gets nervous and wants to leave. Uh, at that point, Hinkle uh, removes his towel uh, and starts grabbing at the kid. Okay, And shows him his penis, obviously. All right, very classy. Uh, when busted, uh, then he, the Hinkle goes into the ba I'm sorry, the kid goes into the bathroom, calls his sister, says, get me out of here because this guy won't let me go. And he's saying, hey, you know what, if I, uh, I can't leave because he's my ride, right? So the sister co comes, busts in, and at that point, Hinkle is nervous and says, here, why don't you take my Blackberry, my uh, iPad, and I'll give you 100 bucks on top, just don't tell anybody. That's not how it works out for him. But now, first, let's go to Hinkle's quotes, and then I'll come back and tell you how the story ended. Um, he says, uh, in response to the guy posing as a 20-year-old online, uh, men for men, he says, quote, cannot be a long time, sugar daddy, but can for tonight. Would you be interested in keeping me company for a while tonight? So, you know, Hinkle is, a, you know, he's a reasonable uh, gentleman, and as I said, he's from Indiana, uh, and he says, look, I can't be a long time sugar daddy, but tonight I could be your sugar daddy, fair enough. Uh, then he says, I'm in shape, married, professional, 5'8", fit, 170 pounds, and love getting and staying naked. I'm not sure about the veracity of the first part, although he did prove the veracity of the second part later in the night, when he got naked and stayed naked. Uh, he goes on. Another email says, if you want to consider spending night, you might tell your sis so she won't worry. Would have you back before 11 tomorrow. No extra cash, just free breakfast and maybe a late night snack. Well, is he not merciful? He's throwing in free late night snacks and a breakfast. You get a Danish afterwards. Man, this guy is quite generous. But look, to me, that tells you how... He, he knows how young the guy is. Well, the guy's advertising himself as 20, right? But the kid has trouble leaving the house, needs a ride, and says, don't worry, I'll, we'll tell your sister a good story and I'll have you back. Maybe that would have, could have rang some bells and go, hey, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't be having sex with a kid so young that uh, I, I'm gonna have to sneak him back into the house so his sister doesn't get worried. Especially when I'm a Republican who's run on a anti-same-sex marriage platform, which of course, in glass. By the way, uh, let's tell you about that platform. First of all, he co-authored a bill where uh, you were allowed to, in Indiana, uh, get license plates uh, that said, uh, in God we trust. Okay, great, okay, in God we trust, unless we're in a Marriott somewhere with a towel for the first half of the altercation and no towel the second half. Okay, so that's fine, but you know, you can trust in God and then wanna apparently do that. Uh, how about uh, same-sex marriage? Well vehemently opposed, not only to marriage, but to civil unions, uh, voted that way, and family values, and absolutely no rights uh, in those regards for gay people, while he's secretly trying to have sex with very young boys in uh, hotel rooms. Of course! Of course! So, how does the story end? Well, as I told you, the sister comes in, busts them. And now they've got his Blackberry, they've got his iPad, guess, because he just gave him everything. Please, please don't say anything. Uh, and they're leaving, and his wife calls on his cell phone. The sister picks up the phone and says, uh, yeah, your husband's gay. And he was just trying to have sex with my uh, younger brother. So she says, oh, you got the wrong number. He says, oh, yeah? Well, let me read you the emails from his account. She reads the emails, and the wife goes, according to the sister, says, um, okay, I'll give you $10,000. Don't tell anybody. 
Oops. All right, uh, so that's a, enough of a disaster. Later, the brother-in-law, or the son-in-law, I should say, calls in and says, oh, we don't believe uh, you have those emails. So then the sister meets up with the daughter of Hinkel and shows his daughter the emails where he's looking for the gay sex and is willing to throw in the free Danish. And uh, once Hinkel finds out that all of this has happened, he's talking to the sister, and he says, quote, you just ruined me. Now, that is entirely true, given that we just told, you know, the, your wife and your daughter and the son-in-law, and now the, oh, obviously the press has the story, etc. But here's what you had to realize, Hinkle. She didn't ruin you, you ruined you.